So uh, good afternoon, everyone. So thank you for uh, being here and one more uh, CMC webinar uh, together with an academic. And uh, before before uh, I I give uh, the word to Vincent, I will give a short introduction to CMC and what we're, we're doing, and then uh, then Vincent will take over. So CMC Microsystems, uh, basically what uh, what we are, we're uh, a, a non-for-profit organization uh, that started in 1984. And what you do is provide infrastructure for innovation for both academics and industrial uh, clients. And we do this in uh, uh, in five different areas. So artificial intelligence and machine learning, MEMS, microtrons, photons, and quantum computing. And uh, in, in terms of quantum computing, uh, we have like three different types of service. One is quantum software as a service. We have uh, we have access to IBM's quantum computers, then other quantum computers and new machines will be announced soon. So we basically work with partners to develop uh, algorithm solutions uh, in any basically any problem uh, that is relevant for quantum computing, such as biology, chemistry, finance, and uh, physics and quantum machine learning. So CMC is very strongly, uh, uh, it's the main core of our business activities on fabrication of device. So we, we offer all the support that's needed to clients to fabricate uh, quantum device and simulate them as well. So uh, in a part of quantum hardware as a service, what we do is to provide uh, access to tools that will allow you to, de to design, simulate, and verify uh, Quantum quantum hardware or, or microelectronics and photonics and MEMS device and simulation tools for materials as well. Uh, the main the main the main project that we have is called Much Project Toy for Fabrication Fabrication Service and basically what we do we we make an agreement with a, a partner a foundry partner such as a TSMC or a Global Foundries. We uh, CMC buys the full wafer. Uh, and we sell small areas to to academics and uh, industry. So the, it's a very cost effective way to prototype a device. And uh, to allow this type of service, we offer access to a design kit uh, that will allow you, you to design according to the founder rules. Uh, we, as a service, we provide design rule checking to be sure that uh, your design is not only compatible with the founder rules, but also with the measurement requirements for your for your device. And we just launched a, a new fabrication service for Niobium based superconducting device. So with VTT in Finland, we announced a fabrication service for aluminum based superconducting device in 2023. And we are working with partners to offer a fabrication for quantum photonics and quantum SMOS device. And as I mentioned, we do this fabrication service, this model of a fabrication for Microelectronics technologies, photonics, and MEMS. The other big part of our, our activities is training. So we offer what's called gate-based quantum computing using IBM Quantum. So this workshop is uh, in the winter, uh, January, February, and we usually choose a topic uh, of interest is like quantum chemistry was in 2021 and quantum, quantum machine learning in 2022. And this, we use this talk to teach uh, the participants really how to program uh, IBM's quantum computers and get a very good knowledge on not only on the software side, but also on the on the hardware side, how you optimize your code for, for the hardware. And the other training activity that we have in place right now, it's called Video sup on Superconducting uh, Device Workshop. So this is basically a workshop that teaches how to design, simulate, fabricate, and test superconducting quantum device. We support all the process for you, so from the workshop to the fabric to the testing. So we 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 provide the participants with cattles and the fabrication of the device. And if you don't if the participant doesn't have access to a cryogenic lab, they can test the, the device at the quantum fab lab that's due to quantique. Uh, so these training activities they're done in collaboration with many partners across across Canada. And uh, we are we will we'll be launching a new uh, fabrication workshop in uh, the spring of 2023. It will be a quantum photonics uh, fabrication workshop. And stay tuned uh, 
at CMC's website and events events page to, to get more information about it. And please follow us on uh, social medias and uh, please feel free to contact me at any time uh, via my email here. So that was a very short uh, some presentation about CMC. So now I will stop sharing my screen and I will introduce you to Vincent. Uh, so, uh, so Dr. Uh, Vincent Michel Rio. So he has, uh, I think, an uh, undergrad and graduate students at uh, McGill uh, working under the supervision of Professor Hango, uh, the, the founder of uh, Nano Academic. And uh, during his studies at McGill, uh, Dr. Michel Rio uh, did uh, uh, basically he developed all the, the codes for both Nano Decal and RASC tools. Uh, that uh, he's going to discuss today, and uh, he finished his PhD in 2018 and joined uh, an academic where he's now leading uh, both the development and commercialization of the atomistic tools of uh, uh, an academic such as Nanodical, Nanodical Plus, Rescue, and Rescue Plus. So thank you very much, Vincent, for being here today. And uh... yeah, thank you, Hudson. Uh, let me share my screen. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, just a small correction. I, I uh, cannot take credit for developing uh, the entire nano decal, or uh, I, I just uh, worked on a small part of it for optimization. But uh, that was the um, uh, accomplishment of uh, Dr. Lelio. Uh, but I did work on uh, nano decal plus. Uh, yeah, the core. Um, OK, so. <clears throat> Uh, thank you all for joining and attending this webinar. Uh, so this webinar is going to be about uh, atomistic quantum transport, and it's uh, in partnership with CMC Microsystem and uh, Nanoacademic Technologies. Here's a brief outline of my talk. I'll just uh, quickly go over like what Nanoacademic Technology does, and then give an introduction about atomistic technologies. Uh, then review. Uh, our atomistic products and show a few use case, um, namely uh, scientific publications. And then I'll give a little uh, live demo of Device Studio, which is a uh, atomistic builder that allows you to control workflow of calculations uh, using our tools. And I, I will also demonstrate the uh, uh, scripting backend for uh, Rescue Plus and Nano Decal Plus. Uh, and then there will be a question and answer uh, session. Okay, so uh, our company is Nano Academic. It was founded by Professor Guo, uh, Dr. Ju, and Dr. Liu, who wrote uh, Nano Decal in 2008 in Montreal. And uh, it's located just across the street uh, from McGill University. And um, our positioning has traditionally be like really uh, molecular quantum transport software. And for a few years, we've been uh, invested in quantum modeling uh, software too. There was a uh, another webinar about that at the end of July, which I invite you to uh, look back on, which was given by uh, Dr. Uh, Felix Baudouin. Uh, so here you see the, the team. So we're a team of um, like uh, basically a dozen uh, PhDs uh, that uh, spearhead the development of uh, well, atomistic and quantum products. Uh, so we offer different software licenses. Uh, so we have uh, packages for academia, governmental lab, and uh, private industrial uh, players. And uh, we also have like various uh, licensing uh, framework. Uh, we offer free trial. Uh, if you'd like to try, I will leave some link uh, at the end of the presentation and you can go on our portal and uh, you can test all our codes uh, for free. Um, all right, so what do we do um, and what are the products? So first of all, we have a uh, nano decal that is a quantum electronic uh, transport software that um, uh, calculates transport property from first principle. And then there is a uh, rescue, which I uh, started developing during my PhD, which is a large scale DFT solver uh, with a lot of like methods and alternative and allows you to uh, benchmark uh, a lot of methods within uh, one framework. And like more recently, um, we have launched a 
that UT CAD. Again, that was the product highlighted in, in the previous uh, webinar. That is a technology or quantum technology computer aided design tool. Um, so for atomistic products, uh, just a few uh, words like what are the applications? Well, because it's um, ab initio, uh, you can really um, describe uh, accurately uh, a whole flurry of material going from molecular transistors, nanostructure, batteries. Uh, you can also get a lot of properties like Raman spectroscopy, uh, like tunneling currents in uh, STM experiments. Uh, you can study alloys, interface, etc. And so the focus of uh, today's webinar is going to be these two tools uh, and the new versions, uh, NanoDecal Plus and Rescue Plus. Uh, so, and uh, I'm just going to mention these tools have been used in uh, a few hundreds uh, scientific publications that are peer reviewed, um, and uh, their robustness uh, is therefore uh, proven. Okay, so let me introduce a little bit why uh, we invested in atomistic technology. Um, <clears throat> so there is a few trends uh, that lead to there. Uh, the first is like in the semiconductor industry, uh, starting in the 70s, uh, transistor used to be very large, and then the feature size uh, exponentially decreased uh, down to today, where um, some fabs have uh, 10, 6, and even like 3 nanometer. Uh, future size in production. And if you compare that to basically uh, the size of a phosphorus atom, which is uh, basically one angstrom uh, or one tenth of a nanometer, uh, you can see that uh, we're basically nearing the limit where uh, this thing is not going to be a single atom, but obviously like it's so small that every atom matters. And then uh, that brings you to uh, the atomic scale and so atomistic tool uh, come into play. Uh, there's also all sorts of effects as you go down and down and down in size, um, like quantum effects, um, either like quantum 1.0, 2.0, uh, start playing a role. So it can be like interference, tunneling, uh, ballistic transport. Uh, all of that is hardly captured by the more classical uh, tools. And hence, we have uh, developed atomistic tool to be able to um, deal with these effects. There is also um, the fact that as you go down, simply you can start resolving the atoms. So there's like green boundaries in the bulk, roughness in the surface, and uh, a lot of the uh, classical models also break down there. Now there's another trend, uh, maybe more um, from the chemist, uh, which is a, a more like a bottom-up approach which is creating a molecular junction and studying them. Uh, so these can also work basically as uh, single molecule transistors in many cases and are of like scientific interest in any case. And there you have like intrinsically uh, a problem that has to be described atom by atom and hence against the need for uh, atomistic tool and to tools that can correctly deal uh, with quantum properties. Um, transport wise. Uh, so here's a picture of uh, Mark Ratner, uh, who was uh, one of the, uh, well, we could say founder of the field and, and uh, gave some very important contribution and uh, predicted the existence of uh, molecular diode. Um, so to put a bit of a picture on like the kind of things we simulate, uh, it can be like various um, materials, molecules, and devices. Uh, so if you study a molecule uh, that's on a surface, uh, tunneling or transport through uh, like a, an STM tip um, that has a molecule um, on its tip, uh, surfaces, interfaces, uh, all of these problems require fine grained um, description uh, atom by atom, hence the need for atomistic tools. Um, so more and more, um, the science side of um, these experiments uh, and what people do in engineering uh, are like approaching and basically coll collisioning. 
Uh, and there's a, a number of uh, methods that used to be the um, uh, domain of science, like uh, ab initial calculation, uh, atomistic calculation, that will start to overlap with the requirements and need of the engineering industry that tended to use uh, like a top-down approach, uh, and also uh, have like different um, like requirements due to the fast pace of like the development in the industry. Um, you know, without wanting to um, characterize too broadly, I think like engineers are usually like really result oriented, like whatever works. Um, and that's good. That allows them to achieve like really great thing. In science, there's a more like deep understanding uh, that is put forward. And uh, quantum transport tool like really allow you to do that. Uh, being able to calculate all sorts of fundamental properties like wave functions, scattering states. And so you can fill in the basically the, the gap between uh, science and engineering. And that's where uh, an academic product uh, tried to fill in the gap. <clears throat> um, so we like to think of like a hierarchy of, um, let's say, uh, transport. Uh, methodology and framework um, according to this pyramid uh, with like an EGFDFT at the top and then going uh, more down you have um, a binding NEGF which is uh, like parametrical uh, but still atomistic and then NEGFK.P uh, is still quantum but um, has like a continuum description of devices and then all the way down to drip diffusion. Um, so really, um, this is uh, a pyramid that has like two sides, and this is better represented on a, um, a plane, which I will show in the next slide, but just to locate people. Um, so for nano decal and nano decal plus, uh, they can deal with the two first uh, rungs of this pyramid, and then QTCAT implements uh, K.P theory and effective math and EGF. And uh, we also have some codes uh, that are not commercial at the moment that can do drip diffusion calculations. And if you put this on a plane uh, where you have like the accuracy of like the material physics in your simulation on the horizontal axis and the accuracy of the transport physics on the perpendicular, uh, the, the vertical axis, uh, you would have like drip diffusion at the um, bottom left corner, any EGFDFT at the top right corner. Um, so this is a little bit the king of methods, uh, in quote unquote, um, because it's parameter free. Uh, it has like a good description of quantum transport and uh, a quantum description of the material physics. Uh, and then you can go down to any GFTB, uh, any GFK.P and uh, <coughs> The more you go uh, to the uh, top right corner, the more predictive power you could say you have, um, but also the more expansive the computational method is. And as you go down um, this ladder, uh, you can uh, describe increasing device size and describe a lot more uh, devices in a limited amount of time. <laughs> um, so depending on the problem actually, uh, which method you will uh, want to choose depends. And so uh, we have good coverage of these methods, uh, like I was mentioning on the previous slide at Nano Academy, with Nano Decal dealing with the atomistic uh, quantum transport stuff, and QTCAD being able to describe more complicated uh, device geometries, uh, implementing uh, effective math and K.P uh, models for the materials physics. All right, so let me jump to uh, atomistics now. Um, here's a brief history of like our product line. Um, so basically the first NEGFDFT code was uh, written by Jeremy Taylor uh, and Professor Gross Group in 2001. And the first papers on NEGFDFT uh, started the field at that time. Uh, it was like really used to support uh, the existence of Ratner diodes. And uh, so that was uh, a nice validation. 
And then this code was developed uh, for quite a while and a lot of feature were packed in it uh, until 2008 when uh, Nanoacademic Technologies was founded. And it was founded and then NanoDecal came out the next year, uh, which basically aggregated and uh, united all the features uh, of the quantum transport codes that were developed in the group. And then a few years later, uh, the first version of Rescue was out, a uh, large scale DFT code. A year later, Device Studio, uh, GUI, and uh, Atomistic Builder, I will show, uh, was out. And then this year, we just released uh, Nano Decal Plus and Rescue Plus uh, in tandem uh, in January, just a little bit before uh, QT CAD, which I haven't shown here uh, because I'm talking about Atomistics. All right, so uh, yeah, what can you do with all these tools? Well, first of all, uh, we have like advanced building tool uh, allowing you to build a whole uh, bunch of structure. I will show that. And then you ha we have like a user-friendly uh, interface, uh, which allows you to uh, set up all the parameters for these complicated uh, uh, calculations, nicely organized in a hierarchy of uh, tabs here. And then with that, you can uh, predict uh, several material properties uh, pertaining to like the, the structure of the materials, electronic properties, optical, magnetic. Uh, you can calculate certain uh, electron uh, phonon uh, functions. And um, <clears throat> I'd say the, uh, yeah, the name of the game is like uh, our code really um, are like powerful. So it allows you to uh, simulate more realistic materials. Uh, and then Device Studio can also be used to, to analyze the, the materials. Um, so just at a glance, like what is the difference between uh, like all these codes and then which one would you choose over uh, another one? Um, so this is a map of like all the atomistic code uh, separated in two columns. So one column is for the transport and one is for the material physics. So material physics uh, is uh, dealt with by Rescue and Rescue Plus, and transport by Nano Decal and Nano Decal Plus. And then uh, the rows, so the rows show uh, two different framework. So we have our uh, like state-of-the-art code, uh, Nano Decal and Rescue that have existed for a while. Uh, they have like a lot of feature, long history of publications and good integration in Vice Studio. Uh, so some of like the highlight features of Nano Decal, for example, is the ability to deal with um, uh, photon, uh, like photon generated uh, current, the thermal transport tool, phonon tools, complex, complex band structure, uh, multi-probe transport, etc. And in Rescue, we have like several implementations of density functional theory, advanced uh, functional like hybrids, um, a lot of uh, analysis tool. We have a whole DFPT package which allows us to quickly calculate uh, phonon properties, infrared and Raman spectra. Uh, and there's also more parallelization scheme uh, in particular like GPU acceleration for a uh, heterogeneous uh, computing platform. Uh, and then for Nano Decal Plus and Rescue Plus, um, it's written in a Python and Fortran framework. Um, so if uh, you're more interested in that, that could be um, an advantage. And then uh, this is the next generation. Uh, the design was uh, redone, so it has like more scalability and like more power and uh, it's more ready for uh, massively parallel uh, computing. So we have used these uh, codes to calculate structure including uh, up to 100,000 atoms uh, dealing uh, with uh, single zeta uh, basis. And uh, so Nano Decal Plus uh, still packs a lot of feature. You can study spintronics, um, you can get the transmission in nanostructure, uh, current, IV curve, scattering states, uh, and more. And as for rescue, uh, it also has like more capabilities dealing with large uh, atomic structure problems. You can compute the electric tensor, uh, defect levels, uh, 
pen alignment problems uh, and more. Um, all right, now I'm just gonna turn to a few use case. Um, so why did we uh, focus on solving a uh, really large scale DFT problem in the first place? Uh, well, one trend that we saw growing up was that um, uh, a lot of research now focuses on uh, so-called van der Waal uh, heterostructure, uh, by which we uh, take various uh, 2D or quasi-2D materials and stack them to create uh, new materials. What happens when you do that is that you create uh, more patterns in the structure, which is basically like a longer range potential that acts on top of the uh, very local atomic potential. And that can be created by either an external potential from an external field, but usually like lattice mismatch or rotation will spontaneously create these. And this gives rise to new properties. So it's not just something you can uh, patch up together uh, to figure out like how the whole structure gonna, is going to work. You just need to do it. And one very radical such effect was recently observed in bilayer graphene, for example. So when you have two sheets of graphene rotated at a, a very specific angle, uh, you get uh, drastically different electronic properties and, uh, for example, uh, superconductivity turning basically to, um, to uh, semi-metal and to uh, semiconductors. And so to compute this sort of thing, you need uh, large-scale calculations because the unit cell is very large and includes... So when I say very large, it's typically more than 5,000, 10,000 atoms. So that's really hard to deal with uh, using traditional codes and methods. Um, so one sim like pretty um, similar uh, um, <coughs> structure that we studied, uh, one of the first uh, large calculations done with RISC-Q was graphene deposited on a hexagonal boron nitride. So this kind of structure has like a small lattice mismatch such that the uh, resulting uh, unit cell has more than 12,000 atoms. And then to study its atomic properties, well, first you need to uh, relax the structure, which we could not do at the time. This was done with molecular dynamics, but then all the band structure calculations, the uh, eigenstates, everything could be uh, obtained uh, atomistically and for, from first principle with uh, rescue. So what was shown here uh, basically was that uh, first you uh, have like an opening of the uh, of a gap at the regular Dirac cone, which is at the K point here. And at the gamma point, this uh, Mori pattern actually creates a uh, so-called second order Dirac cone, uh, which also have a gap. And uh, looking at all the uh, stacking, like the local order, the, um, the, the wave functions of various states, we, we could explain why the, these uh, gaps open in this way with this relative weight. And uh, yeah, this has been like the, topic of a uh, little controversy uh, in the theoretical literature, but these were observed uh, by uh, actually Andrew Gein and uh, reported in a Nature paper. And so we decided to do that, uh, that structure. So that's in the flat sheet case, but uh, what we also showed in this paper is that if it's freestanding, this thing is gonna corrugate and actually recover a more uh, like straightforward behavior where the second order direct current disappears, uh, and this gap is also open uh, wider. <laughs> and uh, so this is an example of like one of the wave functions. So you can see that uh, it actually locates in certain part uh, of the lattice and not others. Uh, and that basically allows us to, to explain why um, this opens up uh, in this way and uh, why this, this uh, direct content form in the flat sheet and not in the freestanding uh, structure. Um, let me turn to a use case of nano decal now. Um, so nano decal, uh, like I said, is a state-of-the-art uh, atomistic quantum transport code that implements NEGF. And um, one of the applications, um, uh, one of the 
uh, prime applications of nano decal study uh, spintronics. So that's a lot of interest because uh, it could be the basis of next generation nano electronics uh, with low power consumption and like high density of transistors and uh, like increased performance. And so a, a natural platform for uh, spintronics is graphene nano ribbons because uh, if you have like zigzag edge, they have intrinsic edge magnetism. But the tough thing is achieving like large spin polarization and uh, also the spin current. So with nano decal, you can study structure like the one shown above here. So you could sandwich uh, a graphene nano ribbon in form nitride. Uh, and when you do that, uh, the uh, potential from the boron and nitride atom actually turn the uh, degenerate, spin degenerate band structure of the uh, graphene nano ribbon um, into a band structure where the spin up and spin down have a different band gap. And then you could think about uh, optically addressing uh, one over the other. And uh, the photocurrent um, feature of nano decal was used here to show that uh, indeed you can tune the photon energy to only create um, charge carrier of a given spin type. And then by adding uh, on top of that, like a bias from like right to left, uh, we're able to calculate like how much current would flow from right, right to left. And you can guarantee by tuning also the bias to proper values that you will only have carriers uh, of one spin flowing from one side to the other. And then that could be a proposal for a spintronic transistor. So that's the kind of calculation you, you can do with uh, nano decal, basically combining uh, like electrostatic effects, uh, quantum transport uh, under uh, bias and uh, photons incident on the device. Now, let me just say a word about uh, like rescue plus and nano decal plus. <clears throat> so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is like the next generation of code. Um, it is much more uh, prizable and it, it, it um, allows us to not only run larger system, but run like a uh, somewhat large system, like much faster. So for example, here on the right, I'm showing um, like a battery material uh, where you have a liquid electrolyte and a lithium slab. And then uh, that's a molecular uh, dynamics video. Um, and uh, Rescue Plus was used in, in this kind of material to study uh, solid electrolyte interface uh, effects uh, in battery material. Uh, so these calculations are extremely expensive. And, and so you need to, to do like a lot of time steps quick to, to get that. Um, again, going back to Vanderval heterostructure or just like large uh, bilayer heterostructure. Um, graphene has also been uh, put forward as a potential material for um, uh, the unknown material to, to have like lithium intercalation. Uh, again, like diffusion of these uh, ions uh, in these materials is very difficult to, to get uh, atomistically because uh, just a small angle between the two sheets will result again in a uh, more a pattern. And then simply here, uh, this will induce like corrugation, which will be important and uh, can modify the diffusion. Um, <clears throat> so here, yeah, I'm just gonna say that um, with the previous code, um, like the, the student that was using that, uh, well, could not really study like for any meaningful time scale the the problem because it takes more than eight hours per MD steps. And with Rescue Plus, we were able to get that down under uh, ten minutes. Uh, and that was a year ago. Uh, we've gone better since. And uh, and then the the student uh, at the time was was also working on a machine learning algorithm that that can. Uh, greatly accelerate uh, this kind of calculation. <clears throat> and so um, here he uh, made a video comparing the speed of the hybrid AIMD algorithm merging uh, DFT and uh, machine learning uh, with our DFT code. Uh, so you can see like how much faster this really is. 
Okay, so yeah, let me summarize a little um, until now and then jump to uh, demo. So um, DFT for computational material science, like why do we really need uh, the large scale? Um, well, first of all, if you're gonna study like realistic problems, uh, you will need like sometimes uh, the electronic structure. So that means like the bands, the extensions, wave function, the charge density, uh, for the whole structure for uh, accuracy because it's necessary in structures like uh, Van der Waal has real structure, but that's also true like for defect problems, interfaces. And then you also want in some cases an unbiased description. Uh, so ab initio and transferable to validate maybe non-QM approach or uh, maybe uh, do some statistics or figure out like what is the systematic or uh, uh, the error bars on, on your uh, like faster methods. And so uh, this is an article from 2017 showing basically what different methods can do. And then when uh, Rescue came out, uh, it could already extend quite a bit like the range of like what hybrid DFT and DFT can do. And uh, with then, uh, Rescue Plus, uh, now we can uh, almost reach uh, this land scale here with mm -hmm. what's previously just attainable by uh, so called linear scaling DFT or like uh, fragment molecular orbital methods. And uh, yeah, so why would you choose our code? Well, yeah, there's a lot of code out there. Um, some of them also focuses on uh, large scale DFT. Uh, but what I can tell you is uh, many of them are academic, others are really hard to use. Um, if you go with our codes, uh, you will get the full power out of the box. So you basically just uh, install our code, uh, which builds like on a lot of like really high performance, modern uh, numerical libraries, and you get a full power for all the features. So I know we have like collaborators, they said, well, they know any codes, they can use like such code for this problem, another code for this one. But in many cases you, you yeah, maybe you have a large DFT code, but it cannot do spin orbit coupling. And you have this code which can do everything, but it cannot do large scale DFT. And this other code maybe has spin orbit coupling, but doesn't have like ONCV pseudo potential. Uh, in Rescue Plus, everything just works uh, right off the bat. Uh, so full spin treatment, uh, all pseudo potentials, uh, any basis, and all the modules. So you will be able to go from uh, ground state calculation all the way down to all the analysis you like to do uh, for 10,000, 20,000 and more atom structure. Okay, um, let me now just briefly show uh, Device Studio. All right, so here I started a um, like a project so you have a project space here in Device Studio, and uh, you can uh, see all the materials that you've created and manage the workflow. So that happens here on the side. Uh, sorry, this out. All right. Um, so in the files, you can uh, open files, edit. What I want to just show. Um, uh, briefly is how to create materials. Um, so there's a number of things you can create here. So for crystal, uh, you can create crystal just like from scratch. Uh, so for example, if I want to create some silicon crystal, if I know the uh, space group 227, I can go there, fill in like uh, the lattice constant and add uh, some atom at zero, so silicon. And then I can preview that and you see I have my silicon crystal. I can also get the conventional cell if I like and then build this crystal. So it's gonna appear here in my editor. Uh, now on this crystal, I can do a number of transformation. I could make a slab out of it. I can make a super cell. So let me go here. There's a few buttons like a shortcut here to create a conventional face center supercell. So I could create that. Now I could also make that bigger and bigger and uh, and go 
go forward, um, work with Microstall. Um, in the ribbon here, there's most of the uh, tools you uh, like you would like to use to uh, analyze the structure. So first of all, you can add an atom. Uh, here you could passivate an atom. If I click on an atom, I can uh, delete it. I can undo that. I could also swap that for some other atom, let's say silicon uh, or nitrogen. Um, I can, uh, if I wish, take these atoms, uh, wrap them in a cell. Now they're all in the cell, but if one was out, I can center them. So they're all contained in the cell. Uh, here I have like some uh, buttons for some information. So if I click on these two atoms, I can get the, the length. I can click a third one, get this angle. I can also click yet the fourth one, uh, get the dihedral angle. So that's the angle between the planes uh, spanned by these uh, four things. I could also get the displacement vector between this and that. And uh, yeah, now you may think like there's too much stuff in here. So I'm just going to right click and clear these annotation. Uh, but if I want to keep the annotation and I ex can export that as a PNG. Um, now, if I don't want to create the crystal from scratch, uh, I can go in here. There's a database of uh, zero, one, D, two, D, three D materials. So if I want to find uh, silicon again, I can go here and say semiconductors and find my silicon uh, crystal uh, right away. Um, and now let's say that I'm ready to uh, do some uh, simulation on that. I can click on the simulator tab. I have nano decal, rescue, and uh, also interfaces to some other codes. So if I choose, let's say, nano decal, and try to do a self-consistent calculation. I can choose the electronic temperature, the cutoff, the uh, exchange correlation. That's the key point sampling. So let's say I'm going to use uh, 555 for accuracy. And then I can uh, yeah, choose a number of other parameters, generate the files. Now this is going to create uh, input files. So you don't need to run, like look at this, but if you're a savvy uh, nano decal user, uh, you could go in there and like learn the meaning of all these keywords or modify them. Here you can recognize the um, the key sampling uh, 555 numbers I've put there. Uh, you could directly change the, the atomic position here, for example, um, or just add something of your own. And then when you're ready, uh, you can like run this um, calculation. Uh, after that, you can do all sorts of analysis. So I could go on and calculate the, the density of state. Again, choosing some, some case sampling. You could get the, the band structure. If you like, you can click on that path, see the reciprocal uh, lattice and its Brunner zone and the meaning of all these uh, high symmetry points, uh, etc. Uh, so I'm not going to do that now. Here I've pre-calculated um, some properties for a silicon crystal. Uh, so once you're done calculating state band structure, uh, you have a like a figure editor here, so you can see the band structure. Uh, you can change the line color to so whatever you like. Um, you can shift the Fermi level that's on top of the valence for comparison. And uh, yeah, you can play with the title. Um, I showed there's the density of state. Uh, so similarly, you can uh, edit that plot. Uh, electron density. So if you want, you can calculate the electron density, show an ISO surface. So you can play with the ISO surface value, the color. If you like, you can take uh, averages in various direction and get a two-dimensional map of the electron density. So that's average along x, y, z. So you see they're the same by symmetry. And that's also a, a 1D, oops, 1D, uh, <coughs> 1D uh, line average of the density. 
So we're rising up at the center of the cell where the, the, the bond is between the um, Yeah, uh, so again, that's complex band structure, similar kind of plot. Now you have uh, spaghetti of bands. Um, so that's it for uh, what you can do. Uh, in a similar way, you can do uh, this with rescue. And then let me um, just briefly show how would you like not do like a silicon crystal, but actually like a significant structure, like the heterostructure of like um, graphene and hexagonal bottom nitride I showed uh, in the, uh, the slides. Um, so I'm going to go here in uh, documents. So let's see. So I'm going to import that path. I'm going to import like a hexagonal uh, carbon structure, so graphite here. Um, and form nitrite. So by the way, this reads like Hongji Wei files by default, but you can read in like SIF files, XYZ files, and uh, a number of format. So I have that. I'm going to remove two of these. So here I basically have graphene now. Here I have monolayer uh, hexagonal boron nitride. Now what I do is uh, go here, create my supercell. Um, so it includes like 56 by 56, 56 by 56 uh, graphene supercell or boron nitride, like that. So do you, that's one is 55 by 55. View, yep, build that. All right, now you can see on the side the size of the, the lattice. So it's uh, <clears throat> basically 3.8 uh, nanometers inside 13.8. Um, and uh, this one is, is also 13.8. All right, now I'm going to create a, uh, an interface between these two. So I'm going to pick um, at the interface builder. And I'm going to go and, and select these, um, these two um, crystals to so have this uh, BN redefine. And carbon redefine. And this is going to search for matching structure. I'm going to string uh, both surfaces here. If I try to match that, I can see a graph of like the strain versus the number of atoms. So everything here is like pretty small string. I'm going to take this structure, which is the, the smallest, and that's basically just stacking the two things on one on top of the other. So this is matching, low strain, and uh, I'm going to build that. As I mentioned before, uh, this has like more than 12,000 atoms. The, the last thing would be to just move that to an appropriate starting distance. So I can do that by shifting this um, along Z. So I'm going to move that here. Uh, that may be too close. I could relax this uh, value, but you can see how uh, convenient and easy uh, it is to, to create that structure. And now you align that perfectly. You can kind of see this pattern uh, repeating on a very long line scale. So you have one region here, one here, and one located at the corner of the cell. Um, OK, well, I'm running out of time, so um, let me just mention that there's a number of tools, like very convenient to create like uh, graphene, nanoribbon, like structure, nanotubes, nanotubes in general, like more like nanowires, uh, disordered graphene. Uh, let me just really show you how to create a nanoribbon. If I create a um, four by four graphene nanoribbon like here and do a uh, supercell, make it look more like a 
nano ribbon. Um, you can see these edge are very chemically reactive. Uh, the click of a button, you can passivate this, maybe remove one, see what this uh, entails for the band structure. And uh, yeah, that's about how you, you can create and compose structure. <coughs> I think we're approaching the the end of the hour, so let me let me just go back here, uh, finish on this uh, device studio demo, and uh, yeah, move on to the Q and A. So just uh, to end, like thank you very much for watching and your interest. Um, like I was mentioning at the beginning, you can visit our website on the portal. You can try the free versions. Uh, so for Nano Decal Plus, Rescue Plus, uh, you, you can test it fully unlocked. And uh, if you'd like, just uh, parse through the documentation and, and the forum to see like how we interact with users and how is it like to run calculations and, and solve structures. Uh, if you have any technical questions about products, you can uh, email me directly or email our uh, directors of sales and marketing for uh, business inquiries uh, or sales. Okay, so thank you uh, for your attention. Hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Vincent.